as a blogger I often have days where nobody wants to be on camera today is one of those days I've been walking around for about two hours just trying to interview people on the street and no one wants to be on camera it's just crazy and it's almost like it's almost like you end up with like approach anxiety because you're just waiting for the next person to turn you down the plan was today to go around because it's been a nice autumn day nice and warm the plan was to go around and ask people uh, what their greatest and best memory of the last summer was because it was a it was a real scorcher in Russia but I only found one person for like two hours that was prepared to answer me now essentially I know who my target audience is I know that creative people are fine getting on camera and it's usually as well people who have confidence the people that turn you down are just people that don't have confidence and that's why they say no because all oh, the worried what the hair is going to look like or what the face is going to look like or what clothes they're wearing and uh, creative people they just seem to be really confident they don't don't worry about that they're fine just to get on camera sometimes a trick is to pretend to blog don't turn your camera on just to pretend to blog and see who starts giving you attention and then when someone gives you attention looks at you funny gives you a wink gives you a smile you can then turn the camera on and ask them a question now i'm lucky that my friend just called me and said what are you doing i said i'm in the center no one wants to be filming he said all right get around my house we're gonna have go to the banya buy a bottle of whiskey on the way and we'll have a relaxing evening so plans have changed i'm on the way now to my friend's house so i'll bring the camera along and uh let's film some remember this is the one that my friend likes i'm just on the way to picking my mate up to go to the banya and i always come past this and i always look at the reflection because the reflection it just glows even at night it just glows got a few minutes to kill so i thought i'd just get out of the car and and film this part we're in dima's garden dima's sitting in there so nice here and unpeaceful it's just what i need after a kind of stressful week that i've had and uh let's see if we can see over here because over here well it's the lake and the the massive reservoir and forest it really is so peaceful here the only the noisy thing now is Dima's got the music on and the neighbors have got the music on as well let's see what's going on in here so you can see Dima's prepared the onions and the carrots and the rice because he's going to cook a dish called plov today you're going to see that what it's like so this is Dima's house we're just sort of on no man's land now and this is our friend Yuri's house next door to him you might have seen him in some other videos of mine it's going to take a little walk down to the lake they're really lucky to live on this last line of houses before the forest and the lake there's absolutely loads of mosquitoes i don't know if you can see them oh man so in 2011 i'd been in russia for about i don't know i'd say seven eight years and i'd done a few different things i've done some investing in real estate and things like that but then in 2008 the the world first crisis happened i don't know if you remember that and um i was left with just wondering what i was going to do i was in russia just wondering well wh what's next for me and i had this idea to open an english language school which was teaching language in english language to russians and i thought well how can i go about doing that and there was already a model of a school that existed in the city of Vladimir at the time that was an American school and they took gap year students from America so what I thought was let me go and do the same thing so I um, contacted all the universities in the UK and the one who answered me was actually the one from my local uh, town the one that and I had a meeting with them and they needed a gap year program they'd lost their gap year program they'd had problems with it and they needed a gap year program so it was like a win-win for both of us so um I, for the first year I needed to find some people that weren't just from this university because um, I needed some teachers straight away but basically I developed it so it was going to be a gap year program for this university. Um, what happened was we came to an agreement that um, I would take on all the costs 
and that um, at the moment they said right now we've only got funding for EU countries but we're going to have funding for Russia too we'll put it to the board of directors of our university and we'll you know we'll work it out with them um, so half a year into the into the first year and uh, I got a call from the university saying brilliant we're now going to fund um, all the all the costs for our students coming out there because I was paying all the costs and um, and so we were really excited and they said, you know, can you take someone on for, for the summer? For the summer, because nobody wanted to come for the, for the actual uh, winter. People wanted to come for the summer. They'd, they'd spend half the gap year you know, in, in Europe and then in summer they'd come to Russia. And we were like, yeah, okay, well, you'll take people on as goodwill. We don't really have any, any students in summer. It's just uh, outgoing for us. We, you know, it's just cost. Uh, but what, what is a sign of goodwill? We'll take it up. And so the, uh, the, the first year finished and, um, and it was great and everything was brilliant. I mean, I'd had loads of problems, to be fair. It's like running a school is like being a dad. And because we had loads of people come out that weren't for the university for the first year, it was a bit of a nightmare. Some of the people were just, just wanted to come out and just have fun and drink and didn't want to teach classes. And it was a bit of a nightmare. Um, but we got through that first year. Um, people from Nottingham came out for the summer. Um, it was really good. And then uh, in the second year, we had uh, obviously students from that university with us for their gap year. And um, we uh, got a message from someone from the university saying, I've been to the um, fair, you know, the fair that introduces who's going to come out, uh, what gap year programs are running for the year after. And there's no information about your school, Sam, what's going on. It was called British House, the school was. And we were like, what's going on there? We don't know. Let's, let's contact the university and find out. So I called the university and said, um, what's happening? We ha you're not advertising our school. And they were like, who are you? Who are you? And we're like, who, who are we? We are you. We're your gap year program. And they're like, we've never heard of you before. And I was like, how have you never heard of us before? If your students, your gap year students are in Vladimir right now at our project, at our school, the agreement we have with your university, you've sent your students to us. And they're now teaching English and learning Russian and living with the host family and enjoying the gap year program. We're paying for it all. What's going on? And I was like, well, where's the, where's the lady that organized it with me? Where is she? They were like, she's on maternity leave. And the other person who is, who is organizing it, he's on a sabbatical. So they knew nothing about the gap year program that we'd organized between us and the university. And they said, oh, we don't know anything about that. I'm really sorry. You know, oh, this is really frustrating. I'll tell you what we'll do. Um, you know, we'll uh, try and find some people that are interested in coming out to you. And they called us and said, we've got people interested in coming out to you, but only for the summer. And we were like, right, we've been through this already the first year and the second year, you know, we need, we need people to come out it during term time so uh, they managed to find one person he came out he was again under the impression that it was all being paid for by the university so we're now three years into the project and um they say to me look we haven't got anyone that wants to come out again for the term we've only got people that want to come out for the summer and we're like we don't need people for the summer we're taking all these people on and we're spending loads of money on this and it's killing us they're like well can you just please take someone on again for the summer it'll be a goodwill gesture we're like okay we do it again this whole time the school isn't doing very well at all and we go i'm personally going bankrupt and it's really really stressful and then they contact me and say can you organize a two two week summer course for us it'd be really good so our first year students can come out i organized that ran around stressfully doing it as they took absolutely ages doing the things they need to do to get the visas i finally did it i got them out here they spent two weeks out here while they're out here i uh, introduced them to my silent partner which was the university of vladimir who were providing the visas for us because we sent these uh, university students from the uk to study Russian as well while they were here. And this delegation from the university in the UK basically met with the university out here in Vladimir and then came to me and said, thank you very much for organizing everything and doing this last four years. We don't need you anymore. We've decided to work only with them. We don't work through third parties. Bye. Dos vidanya. And I was like, what? We've been, we've been doing this for four years, completely for free, taking on your uh, students, your gap year students, your third year Russian language students. So I've been asked to help with the, um, with the cutting of the, with the cutting of the uh, bushes because I'm the tallest. Dima on kak serialni obed сейчас. So here we are, Dima's Banya, underneath his house. 
Yeah. So because he's built it underneath his house, they actually lead up to his house. This is the first time I've been here, he's been building this for a while. Look at this, he's got hammam, the Turkish steam one. And I'm not going to go in there because everyone's in here naked. And they want to relax. Let's see if it'll steam up or not. Hopefully, be able to sit in here for a little while without it steaming up straight away, but I'm not convinced it's like 100 degrees at the moment. It's steaming up already, I think. Oh, it's just great being in the banya, it really is. Just released all the stress. It's my favorite Russian pastime, my favorite Russian pastime. So this is the actual oven. Pour the water onto here, and then the wood goes in here, look, to make it hot. So it heats up these rocks, pour the water on it. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So nice in this little out house area that he's got at night. Что, что такое? Делаем плов. Вот сейчас у нас тут говядина томится с луком. Mm -hmm. вот. Добавили морковь. Шишак, да. Добавили морковь. Держать будешь? Выпоина кумин инсайд. Зира. Перец. Зира. Барбарис. Барбарис. Кумин. Кокума. Да, цвет кокума. Перец. Кокума. Перец. Мне кажется, слишком мало приправы, да? Отлично. Ну, англичане бы добавили больше, да. Нажигалочку, да? So now we're playing a game called Fool. It's a game called Fool. It's a card game, it's the easiest and most popular card game in Russia. The goal is to get rid of all your cards. Uh, the, one with the, the one with the cards at the end is the loser, basically. The name is Durak. Fool. The second place after Fool is a game named Bura. Then the name of the game Goat. Goat, really? Oh, okay. I didn't know this game. Interesting. Then Preference and this one. So the goal of the game is to beat the card. So if you put a six down, uh, you've got to get seven, basically, or an eight, you've got to beat the card. And it keeps going, and you keep picking up cards again until all the cards have run out. And then it's the quickest one to get rid of the cards. Each card uh, player has six cards all the time. I love Dima's house, that he has this outdoor area. So we don't have to go inside. This is outside. Uh, it's the rock. This is rice. <laughs> Putting the rice inside now. To help me more bit. A tam nie очень много воды. Воды должно быть на two fingers. Два пальца воды, короче, вот так вот. Я всегда рис положу, а потом вода наверху. А вот тут новые технологии. Пусть их какой-нибудь хайер сделают. Ну что-то это, одинаково пострельщик, как будто это. Не слишком. This is plum. So that's not where it ended, unfortunately. 
Um, we closed, business closed, everything finished. I was basically bankrupt. It was absolute nightmare. I owed money all over the place. But um, I had to close because I couldn't, didn't have a, a reliable source of, uh, of teachers. And um, at the same time, the university had said to me, virtually from the beginning, that we're going to start covering all the costs, we're going to cover all the costs. And I've been taking on these students and paying for all the costs and um, not getting anything in return. And obviously because the staff at the university had changed, um, this new staff we know, they were like, well, we don't know anything about this agreement. We're not going to honor it at all. We know we've got no, no reason to honor that at all because we don't know anything about that. And um, I said to them, well, can you not contact the, uh, the, the people that we originally made the idea with? The, the, well, one's on a sabbatical, the other one's uh, maternity leave. And they said, well, no, it's not policy to contact them. We refuse to contact them. We have no written agreement with you. That's it. We're not going to give you any money. And so I closed. Um, I was very frustrated, it was a very, very difficult time, but I had to close, I had no choice. And then, um, well, autumn came and I got a phone call from uh, two guys, well, a guy and a girl, who were in Moscow at the airport saying, Sam, uh, can you come pick us up? We're here for the gap year program. And I was like, what? No, we, we don't have a gap year program now. We're, we're finished, we're closed. And um, they said, well, how is that possible? The university's paid for us to come out on the gap year. And I said, well, you might think the university's paid for you. That's what they've been telling all the people that have been coming out here. But actually, we've been paying for the whole thing. And uh, we've had uh, this uh, problem. They've refused to now work with us and we're closed. And they were like, well, we're in Moscow. What are we supposed to do? So I helped them out. I picked them up. Another a third person came. There was three of them all together in the end. I picked them up. I brought them to the university. And they said, you know, the university had no idea. Um, that, that anyone was coming from, from you know, the Vladimir University I had no idea that anyone was coming for the gap year program. They knew nothing about it at all. And these, these, these poor kids that come for this gap year thought everyone was paid for. Obviously it wasn't because, as I said, um, the university in the UK had been telling all the kids that they've been sending out to us that everything's paid for, but we've been paying for the whole thing the whole time. And they, um, well, well, their angry parents got on the phone to the, to the university in the UK and uh, had a go at them and they sent the money and paid for the course and then uh, I helped them out a little bit. I helped them out a little bit. I found them somewhere to live and stuff like that. But, you know, it was just, just continued the joke and I felt really sorry for these people that had come out for their year abroad program and, um, well, been let down by this university and, you know, it's just completely unfair. And uh, so this university in the UK continues to send a delegation once a year to Vladimir University that continue to work with them. And um, I was passed a phone number, luckily I got a phone number of the person that we originally made the deal with. And uh, they were in Russia and I called them. And what did they say? They said, don't ever call this number again and put the phone down. And that was it. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you because that was a huge lesson that I've learned. I thought these people in the UK, I mean, I created this whole gap year program for them from scratch, designed the whole thing, made the whole thing, took on all the charges, all the costs. And then, yeah, well, they refused to even acknowledge that I existed after that. And um, yeah, well, that's life. So I just wanted to share that story with you, that memory. And um, if you ever do business, make sure you sign the contract that's the most important thing. Sign that contract and then they can't, you know, deny anything. <laughs>